are some of the hardest pharmacology words to pronounce. First up is clopidogrel. This is an antiplatelet medication, so you want to monitor for bleeding because it inhibits platelet aggregation. Plus, you want to hold this before surgery. Next up is metoprolol. This medication is a beta blocker which can slow the heart rate, so you want to monitor the blood pressure and heart rate. Also, in diabetics, it can mask signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, like the tachycardia. This is ceftriaxone, and this is a cephalosporin antibiotic. So with this, you do not want to give it to patients who have a severe penicillin allergy, and there's a risk of C. diff. So monitor for that frequent, watery, foul-smelling diarrhea. This word here is oxazolidinones, and this is actually a class of antibiotics. And with this, you want to remember that it could cause serotonin syndrome if given with SSRIs, and you want to monitor the CBC because it can suppress the bone marrow. Next up is nitroimidazoles. And this is another class of antibiotics. And with most of these, you want to avoid alcohol because it can lead to a disulfiram-like reaction. This medication name is anoxaparin, and this is a low molecular weight heparin. So what you want to remember with this is you want to monitor for bleeding and look at those platelet levels. Also, when you give it, give it in the sub-Q fat in the abdomen, at least two inches away from the belly button, and do not expel that air bubble in the syringe before you give it. Next, we have dabigatran, and this is a direct or oral anticoagulant and it inhibits the action of thrombin. So with it, you have to monitor for bleeding. This medication name is Ondansetron, which is an anti-emetic, so it helps with nausea and vomiting, but you gotta watch out for a long QT interval, so measure that. And if you give it IV, give it over about two to five minutes, which will decrease the risk of hypotension and a headache developing. Next is Alprazolam. This is a benzodiazepine, and you have to watch for high risk of dependency while a patient takes it, and they must be tapered off of it. They just can't abruptly stop taking it. Next is amlodipine, and this is a calcium channel blocker. Whenever you give it, you have to monitor for peripheral edema and hypotension, and you don't want the patient to take it with grapefruit juice. This medication name is levofloxacin, and it is a fluoroquinolone antibiotic. With it, you've got to watch out for the risk of tendon rupture, and you don't want to give it with antacids. Then there's furosemide or furosemide, depending on how you want to say it. And this is a loop diuretic. So with it, you have to monitor that potassium level because it can cause hypokalemia and it can affect the hearing causing ototoxicity whenever doses get too toxic. Next is amiodarone, and this is an antiarrhythmic medication. With it, it can be really hard on the thyroid, the liver, and the lungs, so you have to really monitor those structures while the patient is taking this, especially with long-term use. It has a very long half-life, and when given IV, you need to use a large vein or a central line because there's a high risk of phlebitis. This medication is levothyroxine, and it is a thyroid replacement medication. You want to remember to give it on an empty stomach in the morning and to monitor TSH levels. This common medication name is called diazepam and is part of the benzodiazepine family. With this, you want to monitor for respiratory depression and avoid in use in elderly patients because it increases the risk of falls. Plus, long-term use of this medication can lead to dependency issues. Next is phenytoin, and this is an anti-convulsant. With this, you have to watch for gingival hyperplasia, so the patient needs to practice really good oral hygiene. Plus, it has a narrow therapeutic index of about 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliter. This medication is gabapentin, and it can work as an anticonvulsant or a neuropathic pain agent. So you have to watch for sedation and dizziness in it. And if the patient is on this long term, you have to gradually taper them off because there's a risk of seizures. Next is omeprazole. And this is a protein pump inhibitor. With long-term use, there's an increased risk of fractures and vitamin B12 deficiency. This is acetaminophen and it works as an analgesic or an antipyretic. But you want to remember that your patient can only have four grams per day because it's really toxic to the liver. And then last is quetiapine, and this is an atypical antipsychotic. With this, you have to watch out for extra pyramidal symptoms and suicidal ideation. Okay, so that wraps up this video. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, you can access the link in the description below.